Hello and welcome to the information evening for the parents and carers of students who will be our new year seven at Bramblegate School Durham in September. I know this isn't quite the um, the evening that we all envisaged it would be. It would be much nicer to be in front of you all in person and in many ways doing this remotely is, is actually more, more nerve wracking. Um, Fortunately, we have been able to get out to a lot of our um, primary schools to speak to students in person. Um, some of those visits have had to switch to um, teams over recent weeks because of um, recent events. Um, but we have been delivering some of the messages that you'll receive here to students in the primaries and they have had an opportunity to, um, to ask us questions as well. But hopefully I'll be giving you some information that you'll find useful, some reminders and perhaps some clarification of things you're unsure of currently over um, the next 20 minutes or so. So if I can start off by telling you a little bit about uh, the Year 7 Year Team, I will be your child's Head of Year and uh, Mr Chivers will be Pastoral Manager. Now you may remember me uh, if you watch the information slides from the virtual open evening earlier in the academic year. You may remember me talking to you a little bit about the pastoral system then. So Mr Chivers and I have just finished uh, being head of year and pastoral manager for our current year 11. We saw them through their journey at Bramblegate School and watched them grow up to be fine young people who we uh, are still, still missing very much. We are very excited, however, to welcome our new year group in September. Now, one of the things that we feel works really well at Bram as part of the pastoral system is that your year team will stay with your child throughout their time at Fram. So we'll start with them in year seven and we'll be with them in eight, nine, 10 and 11. That means that we have that continuity of care. It means we get to build uh, strong relationships with students and parents, of course. And we work together with uh, the, our tutor team, with subject teachers, with other members of uh, key staff across the school and uh, liaise and support yourselves as well. If I can just show you a little bit uh, of an overview of the pastoral system as a whole, your child's day-to-day -day contact will be their, their tutor as part of their step group. You've got their year team, who again, will see them probably um, you know, on a daily basis in some form or another. And then we have our assistant head, Mr. Ward, who oversees student development, and our deputy head, Mrs. Rayson, also oversees the pastoral team, the pastoral system. And as I say, we pride ourselves on the pastoral care that we provide here at Framlegate. And I know that's something that many of you identified as a reason for wanting your child to attend our school. I'm just showing you now a list of other staff who your child may come into contact with during their time at Fram. We have our Senko, Mrs. Danson and the Achievement Centre staff, and I know that they may already have been in touch with some of you directly. We have a social, emotional and mental health lead within the school, an attendance improvement coordinator, Mrs. Gordon, uh, our family liaison officer who works with families who may be having difficulties of a you know, variety of natures. And we have our director of safeguarding as well. Now, obviously, there may be times when you want to get in touch with somebody at school to discuss an issue or a concern you might have with your child. Um, if you can direct that query in the right direction, that can often speed things up. So um, there's a list of contacts on this slide for you. Now, all email addresses are available on our website. You can, of course, phone the school directly and ask to speak to the relevant member of staff. If it is an issue relating to a specific subject or, you know, something to do with homework, for example, in that subject, then we would ask that you direct that towards the class teacher or the subject leader, the curriculum leader for that subject, if you prefer. Mrs Latinsky oversees intervention and academic support if there's a wider issue there. Mrs Danson is our SENCO, um, so anything relating to special educational needs, would uh, she would be your point of contact. Mr Ward for careers, extracurricular and enrichment, he is our assistant head. And for more general or wider pastoral issues or progress concerns or anything that doesn't quite fit into any of those categories, then please, of course, get in touch with myself or Mr Chivers. Do bear in mind that um, most of us are teaching staff also, so that may affect the, you know, the speed with which we can respond. Pastoral managers are non-teaching staff, so they are, are more readily available in the event of something being urgent. But of course, we do respond to emails or queries by phone as quickly as we can. 
Uh, the other thing to be aware of, of course, is that many of your children are going from a school um, where the whole school had fewer students in than, than the year group actually will do for, um, for year seven this year. We will have um, over 1,300 students in the school. And of course, that does mean that we might not be as readily available as you might be used to with primary schools, but we will always get in touch as soon as we can. And we will always do everything we can to help and support. As previously stated, your child's first port of call, if you like, will be their step tutor. They will see them twice a day. They'll see them first thing in the morning for their morning registration. And then they'll see them at the end of every day for a 30 minute step session. Now, the tutor's role will include reviewing progress, behaviour, uh, also achievements and recording your child's achievement points on our school system. Um, they will also deliver careers programmes, PSC and RSC sessions where appropriate and age appropriate as well. We, they also have a, a citizenship programme. We focus on um, charity, the wider community. We'll have inter-tutor group events. We'll also have drop down days within school where they'll be with their step tutor and their tutor group. Um, and it's a really uh, positive experience, um, you know, as they get older through school. Also, the, the focus of those uh, sessions will shift to reflect the kind of changing um, demands of their uh, academic year. So as they near their exams and GCSEs, they'll focus increasingly on their independent study and helping to prepare them with that study as well, also during step time. Now, under normal circumstances, as part of the information evening, you would have an opportunity to meet your child's step tutor. Obviously, that's not going to be possible this evening. I am going to take you through our tutor team shortly. Um, again, as with the year team, we endeavour to keep tutors with their groups throughout the, um, the, the time of a, a child's journey through Framelgate um, to provide that continuity of care as they grow older. Our tutor team are made up of a variety of different teachers um, teaching different subjects across the school. And um, one thing to, to point out is that we have spent a considerable amount of time liaising with the primary schools regarding um, tutor placement. Um, ordinarily by now we'd have the tutor groups finalised. Some of that information um, and communication with primary schools has been um, slowed down a little bit by um, recent, recent events in, in recent weeks. Um, but you will be informed of your child's tutor group very, very soon. And lots of um, thought has gone into the, the, the placing of their tutor group. Um, we have endeavoured wherever possible to ensure that they are in a tutor group with somebody that they know and they get on with. But please um, be aware that it's not possible to put them with all of their friends. Um, it's worth at this point pointing out that we take students from over 30 feeder schools. Um, it's 33 actually, I believe this year which means that we're going to have a wide variety of students joining us from many different places. And actually, for many of those places, it's only going to be a small handful of students coming from those schools. So all of our new year seven will be in a very similar position where they'll all be looking to make new friends. And we, of course, want them to we want to encourage them to do that and um, obviously to, to keep um, maintaining the friendships that they've got, that, that their existing friendships. But we're encouraging them to branch out and meet new people as well. And we'll support them to do that. So as part of our tutor team, we have Mrs. Clifford. Now she's put there, she's worked at Framelgate School for over 10 years. It's actually close to 14, I think. She's been here as long as I have. Um, she teaches history and English, and she lives in lovely Whitley Bay, which means she's um, very lucky living near the beach and she spends a lot of time there. We also have Mrs. Soon, who will be sharing her tutor group with Mrs. Clifford. And as well as being a music teacher here at Fram, Mrs. Sewell also works as a music therapist out in the community. Um, she plays in a band and she even has time for other things such as gardening, walking. And she has, as many of us do, um, she has her beloved collie dog. Lots of us have pets um, in the tutor team as well. Mr. Earnshaw is um, a very serious, as you can see, teacher of computer science. Um, and he runs coding club uh, as well and he has a new addition i'm not even sure if he's got rufus yet but you can imagine that there'll be some conversations in tutor time in september about the antics of his new puppy 
We also have Miss Lovell, who is incredibly talented. Not only is she a teacher of science, but she also speaks German and Spanish. And again, she has lots of interests there that I'm sure she'll be very keen to discuss with her tutor group as she gets to know them. We have another science teacher in the tutor team. This is Miss Emmett and her specialism is physics and she really enjoys keeping fit and um, climbing, cycling and she has she's very excited about um, meeting her new year set at tutor group and she keeps telling me that every single time she sees me. So we've got another year seven tutor who's been a little bit vague about how long we've been teaching for. Uh, Mr Richardson's been at Framwell Gate School for two years now and he says he's been a teacher for a lot longer so we can read into that what we will. He is another sports enthusiast and he teaches maths at Fram. He also does our after school running club every Thursday and I'm sure he would love to see some year seven students there. We also have Miss Scott who's a geography teacher at the school and again some interest including musical theatre, uh, chocolate and I imagine that's quite a common one and she enjoys baking and running as well so we may see Miss Scott at running club uh, if students want to uh, attend there. Miss Darling teaches English and she's another uh, lover of animals. She loves dogs, she loves the coast, and obviously she enjoys reading. Um, another one who likes running, you can see some common themes here in the tutor team. And we have Mr. Oliver and he teaches languages. He enjoys traveling um, when he's allowed to and he loves sport and he's a big supporter of Newcastle United which I'm sure will be a topic of controversy for his tutor group at various points over the next few years. So I know that one of the things that we um, are all particularly disappointed about is the fact that our transition day can't take place this Friday because that gives us a great opportunity for all of the year group to be together for the first time to start to meet new people and to get a real feel for the school um, you know, and, and, and its size and, and where to go. Um, now, I'm aware that uh, a lot of your children didn't, ha have never actually set foot in the school, sadly, because um, open days looked a bit different last year as well. So hopefully um, this provides a little bit of a reassurance to you. And this is something we've kind of emphasised to the students when we've been out in the primary schools, those that we were able to get out and visit, uh, but also on teams when we've been speaking to them. Uh, via teams uh, in their schools as well. When they start in September, those first two days are induction days only. They won't be straight into school and straight into lessons. Their lessons won't start until the following Monday. So these two days give us a great opportunity to really make sure that our students get settled, get to know other people, find their way around the school site, we'll help them to get organised with what they need for the week ahead, and hopefully by the end of that second day, they'll be feeling much, much better um, about the, uh, you know, facing things the, the next week. The other nice thing about that is that on the Thursday, they are actually the only year group in the main school. Year 12 will be in as well, but they, they won't really see each other. They'll be in a separate uh, building. So it means that they're not going to be daunted by the, the older students. They've got a chance to get their bearings first. Now, when students do come uh, arrived into school on the first day um, in September, they will be guided to A Block Yard, which hopefully you can see on that picture there. That will be their year group zone. All of our year groups have a particular zone and area for them. And it's particularly um, beneficial, I think, for year seven, because it means that they are not um, daunted by the prospect of other older students um, in close proximity. Um, whilst they are enjoying their break times or after lunch or prior to school. So they'll be directed towards there on their first day and of course there'll be lots of staff around to greet them. Uh, myself, Mr Chivers, their, their tutors and then we'll take them into the main hall for assembly. But uh, going forward that would be their zone in the morning prior to the start of the school day. So that's where they should head when they arrive into school and the expectation would be that they would be there by 8.25 a.m. Now I know talking to some of the year six students when we've been out in primary schools they do start school at the moment quite a bit later so that's something to be aware of that the school day they do need to be on the school site by 8.25. Uh, they'll then be dismissed to their tutor room ready for the register to be taken and that happens at 8.30 so if they're not there for that register to be taken at 8.30 then they are deemed to be late for school and would receive a late mark. 
We do appreciate there are obviously legitimate reasons at times why students might be late. Um, and, and of course, you can get in touch to let us know about that. School finishes at 2.45, which again will be a change for um, a lot of students and, and for, for the majority of them, I think that will be slightly earlier. But of course, we have lots of extracurricular opportunities and clubs that run after school, which again, we've informed them about as we've been out in the schools um, and they seem really keen on in general. We do encourage our students to get involved in at least one club after school wherever possible. And of course, they'll get more information on those when they start in September and how to sign up for the clubs and the school teams, etc. I also just want to remind you uh, of our expectations uh, and school rules regarding uniform. Uh, obviously, we want our students to arrive looking smart and in the correct uniform in September. And that avoids, um, if, if we get it right to start with, that avoids any um, conversations in September about incorrect footwear or anything like that. And I'll go over shoes um, in a moment. Uh, I've been asked to remind you as well that the final date for free delivery from Seagal's, our supplier, is the 30th of June. I know, uh, again, from speaking to year six students, that lots of them already have their uniform ready to go, um, but that's just a date to bear in mind if you haven't. Now, we do ask for plain black shoes. No trainers are permitted. No extremes of hairstyle or colour. No false nails or brightly coloured varnish. The only jewellery that's permitted for students to wear is one stud per ear and a watch. And please bear in mind that smart watches are not permitted in school either. Just to be more specific about the footwear, here's some examples, which again are on the school website, of what is not uh, acceptable for uh, the school shoes. So anything that, that is a canvas shoe, a sports shoe, or a trainer, nothing with coloured stitching or any kind of embellishments or gold or silver um, on the shoe are allowed. And there's just some examples of what is allowed. Um, so you can see just kind of plain leather or leather look footwear, including paint and leather, completely plain back, and Dr. Martins are permitted provided they don't have coloured stitching. One of the things that we've been speaking to the year six students about uh, is the fact that there is a bit of a step up in terms of what they need to bring to school on a daily basis, um, and that obviously requires them to be organised in advance. Um, they may be used to, for example, coming into school, putting their coat on a peg and then anything they've brought with them in a tray in their classroom. Now, of course, they're going to go to the step room in the morning here at Fram, uh, but after that, they're then going to go to five different lessons that are located in five different places around the school. And unfortunately, we don't have a uh, locker space for over 1000 students. So that does mean that they have to carry whatever they've got with them. Now, aside from the usual kind of expectations of, of what you would have in a pencil case, pen, pencil, rubber, ruler, um, students will need a scientific calculator, which they'll use in their maths and science lessons. They'll also need, uh, they'll also be provided with a knowledge book that, that will be provided uh, to them on their, one of their first days at school. And that contains the knowledge organisers for every subject, um, basically for their, their key learning across the year. And that will be used in lessons, but it may also be used for homework. So it's really important that they look after that. They bring it to school every day and the expectation is that they'll have it out in every lesson. They'll also need a reading book with them, a private reading book that can be fiction or non-fiction. I'll talk a little bit more about reading in a moment. Um, and they will also be given their student planner on their first day. Uh, and that will be where they can make notes, record what homework they've been given, um, but also uh, the most important uh, use for the planet is that they'll receive their achievement points um, in their lessons via stamps from their teachers and those will be uh, recorded by their step tutor. Now one, dare I say, one good thing to come out of COVID. Um, so this year we've had some year groups um, have come to school in their PE kit um, rather than getting changed for PE um, just to avoid kind of close proximity in the changing rooms. But what the PE department have found is that they've actually really preferred that because um, when students are already in their kit, that means that um, they get much more time to actually um, participate in activities. So um, they have now said that from September our year seven, students can come into school in their PE kit on the day that they have PE. And if you've already got the PE kit, students look very smart in that and they seem to prefer that as well. So on those days where they have PE timetables, they can come in in their kit, including their trainers. 
Now, they don't need to worry about that for the first two days. Obviously, they'll get their timetable on the Thursday or Friday of their induction days, and then they'll be able to plan out when they've got PE the next week. Another thing that your child will need to bring with them in September is the book that they've been gifted, which hopefully they've received, um, that we will be using um, as part of our transition to FRAM. So copies of The Goldfish Boy um, have hopefully um, been delivered to all of our year six students by now. And we've asked our students to read that book over the summer, ready for starting in September. We'll be, re we'll be using that book um, to form the basis of a lot of our transition activities that they'll do with their tutor. Um, and that book has been selected specifically because it has some, um, some great links to, uh, in terms of themes, to things that they'll be focusing on, you know, friendship, kindness, um, independence, resilience, um, all those kind of things. We've also got um, some opportunities to, uh, for author visits and things like that as well. So we ask for your support in ensuring that they've read that for September and that you um, help them to ensure that they bring it for at least the first few weeks. We'll tell them when they don't need to bring it in anymore, but that will need to be in their bag every day as well. So we do have high expectations of our students in all aspects. Um, when they're at from school um, and we absolutely are committed to recognising when students are making the right choices, they're getting things right, they're, they're, they're working hard. So we have um, a reward system that we've developed uh, quite a bit over uh, recent times and are still continuing to refine. So students receive achievement points in lessons and in tutor time and those uh, points um, add up to prizes. So they can receive certificates when they reach certain levels of those points. So for example, bronze, silver, gold, and platinum. They also receive badges when they hit each milestone that they can wear on the blazer. Uh, we have prize draws every half term for things such as uh, vouchers, for example. So students can choose a voucher of their choice if they get pulled out of the draw. Uh, we have other interim prizes um, and we have um, uh, tutee of the week as well for example we have some friendly competition that goes on between our tutor groups so we might um, run a competition to see which group can get the most achievement points over a half term and we will of course um, let you know if your um, student is achieving great things um, so if your child is achieving great things, uh, we'll, we'll let you know about that and we'll absolutely celebrate that. We have other, other awards such as the Half Term Lead Deputy Head Award as well. You can view via the parental app, which if you haven't already received information about, you will soon. You can view how many uh, achievement points your child has. And the same goes for any behaviour points that they pick up at school. So we do record any um, behaviour points such as, for example, any um, issues with um, you know homework not done or um, being late without a valid excuse would but for a lesson as well as at the start of the day would incur a behaviour point so you can monitor those and see what they've been awarded for. We do operate a stage system in our lessons which means that students receive an initial warning and um, a final warning and then um, in rare instances it doesn't happen very often um, stage three would mean that they would be removed from the lesson and that would result in an automatic detention after school the next day. Again, as well as being able to see the behaviour points on the app, if your, if your child has received a detention for a removal from lesson or, for example, um, because they've had a mobile phone confiscated or because of poor behaviour on the school site, you would be informed of that detention via text message. Now, um, as I say, the vast majority of our students go through um, school without incurring any of those um, sanctions, but I do think it's important that students and parents are aware of those. If the uh, you know, behaviour is, is not as is desired, that's where Mr Chivers and I um, would step in to offer support. We do also have a report system in place. Um, and of course, we would be in touch with parents to let them know if we had wider concerns. At this point, I do um, want to say that we, of course, uh, want to work with parents and families to support uh, our students. And, you know, we're both very experienced um, in our roles. And in that experience, we always have much more effective results when um, school and home work together um, and are on the same page. If you've got any concerns about your, your uh, child's behaviour, uh, of course, you can get in touch to discuss that with us as well. Another important aspect that um, I think it's really important that everybody is clear on 
is our expectations regarding mobile phones and social media. So the school um, rule is that mobile phones are switched off and in students' bags at all times when they're on the school site. That means before they enter the school and they should not take out their bag until they've left the site. Um, we find that that um, is hugely beneficial for a variety of reasons. Um, you know, we are a very experienced pastoral team in how difficult it can be to um, help to resolve issues that have occurred over social media or via text message between students. That's a bit of a grey area that's developed in recent times, um, particularly because a lot of that happens outside of school, but then can sometimes spill into school. So again, we ask for your support um, in making sure that your uh, children are responsible online and safe online. All of our students will have an online safety assembly um, during their induction days and will be asked to sign um, a safety contract. Uh, and it's just a reminder really that um, WhatsApp, Snapchat, Facebook, TikTok, they all have age restrictions which um, are at least 13, most of them are 16, which means in actual fact none of our Year 7 students should be accessing those sites um, and there's, there are re good reasons for, for those rules being in place. Now I hope you don't think that we're coming down all hard and heavy. But you can imagine in a school with over 1,000 students and a year group that's going to have 2,030 students, it's really important that um, our expectations, our routines, our structures are all made really, really clear to students and parents um, to, to avoid complications further down the road. So the last thing really that I wanted to leave you with and um, that we've really been saying to all of our students when we've been out to the primary schools or um, done our uh, transition visits via Teams as things have fallen to in the last couple of weeks. Um, there are three things that we're really um, asking them to focus on and the, these kind of key words that we'll keep coming back to um, in the, um, well not just the early days of them starting at Fram, but certainly they'll hear these words a lot from me in assemblies and and from their tutor and other people. Absolutely know uh, that it's a huge step up from going from being the, the oldest in your much smaller school to being the youngest in a much bigger school. And it's really daunting for a lot of our students, particularly when they face so many challenges recently due to, to lockdowns and, um, and, and COVID. So we absolutely want to support students, but we also want to prepare them realistically for the, the wider world out there. So we're asking them to, to develop their independence and their resilience. And again, I know this is the resilience is certainly a, um, a, a message that the primary schools have been given. Um, the Essex students as part, part of their role that they play in transition as well. They will have some days that go better than others. We are here to support them on those days and to help them bounce back from things. We're asking them to take responsibility for themselves, for their behaviour, for the decisions that they make. And again, we're here to support them wherever we can in doing that. And it's so important, and we've really emphasised this, in line with our school ethos, that we show each other kindness and respect at all times, that we uh, think before we speak, that we treat others as we would be treated ourselves. And again, this is a key message that we'll keep coming back to through the year group uh, and throughout their years at FRAM, uh, because when we're kind and respectful to each other, of course, everybody has a much more positive experience of school. Thank you so much for listening. I'm sorry um, to take up so much of your time, uh, particularly remotely. I hope some of the information has been at least a useful reminder for you. If there is anything that you would like to discuss further or anything you think we might need to be aware of about your child, which you don't think we are, then please, of course, do get in touch. Uh, we look forward to meeting all of the children properly uh, in September and, of course, getting to know yourselves as well. Thank you very much.